Let's make this scene more interesting before we look at the other ways to add a force to the simulation. I want to add simple skittles in a stylized form. I'm going to use a technique we've already seen, which is to add a series of points on which to copy objects. So I move inside the geometry node and add a single point. Then I add the point replicate node. We have already seen this node in previous lessons. I choose a circle in the shape panel and change the plane's direction. I also enlarge the point distribution and reduce the quantity of points. Now I need to add a single piece of geometry, a box in my case. I want to increase the height of this cube. But if I increase the height, the box will get bigger, above and below the ground. A simple method to increase the height only upward is to place the center of the cube at its base. An expression is used to do this. Right-click in the y-axis of the dimension and copy the parameter to the y-axis of the center with the command, paste relative references. This has to be divided by 2. So, no matter how high you increase the height of the box, it will always stay in the same place on the floor. Now, we need to make copies of these boxes and replicate them on all the points we've made. We use the Copy to Points node, which we already know. I connect the box in the first input and the points in the second input as template. These skittles must be part of the simulation. Then, each of these boxes must be turned into a packed object, which we already know how to do. Then, I add a packed node, followed by the transformation node. So, we can, for example, change the size or the position. Also, change the distribution of these boxes appropriately. I also visualize the sphere to see its position. To see two elements at the same time, we have to turn on the template view on one of them. In fact, I can't turn on the view of two elements at the same time. So, for instance, I turn on the display tag for the sphere and the template tag for the skittles. I can see both objects this way. I also need to move the boxes around. Now I have to add the boxes to the simulation as well. So, I connect the output of copy to points to the second input of the dope network. I need to add the second group of objects, which is the boxes, to the dope network. I then have to do a merge with the sphere. Then, the skittles also show up in the simulation. We can now start the simulation and watch what happens. The impact works as it should, and the simulation is done. But of course, we have to change some parameters to make it more interesting. As an example, I can make the ball go faster. Good. A second thing I can do is make the sphere bigger.
We can now adjust the simulation settings until we get the result we want. We can change the mass, the friction, the tendency to bounce, and so on. For example, I can make the sphere more dense. The same thing can be done by making the boxes heavier. For example, let's try to make their density very high. If I increase it even more, the resistance of these pins is even greater. All of these physical parameters can be changed until we get the kind of simulation we want. Of course, this is a very simple example but it gives us the basis for being able to carry out many simulations. So, based on what you've learned so far, I suggest you to create an entirely new simulation. Let's think of another situation, where we want to move the sphere by hand and then put it into the simulation. First, I put the sphere back to how it was before. Then, in Dope Network, choose the sphere object and set its speed back to zero. So the sphere is subject only to the force of gravity. Now I'm going to manually animate the sphere. Go to frame 1, click on the transform node. And while holding down the alt key, click on the translate property. This makes a new keyframe. After that, move forward in time. I want to move the sphere forward along the x-axis by using the handle tool. I add a new keyframe and activate the view on the transform node. The sphere moves as we expect to be. But let's see what happens if I turn on the visualization of the dope network. Nothing really changes in the simulation. In other words, the sphere is only affected by the force of gravity. But why does this happen? The answer is in the way the sphere is considered within the simulation. So let's go back to the dope network and choose the object that represents the sphere. Let's look at this initial state object property. This property tells the simulation how to take the object into account. There are several possibilities. The default choice is the first one, which is the one we are looking at right now. Create active object means to make an object that only responds to the forces of the simulation. In this case, the gravity. We have to choose this other option, create deforming active object, to make the object move according to the keyframes we created. Now, the sphere moves both because of how we animated it and because of the force of gravity. The final animation is then a mix of our animation and the force of gravity, which tends to push the sphere down. In this case, the sphere does not have enough force to impact with the skittles. So I'm going to go back to the sphere and make the animation faster. Because of this, we have given more speed. By putting this keyframe back, I can also speed up the animation. To move a keyframe, click and hold the middle mouse button. Then, move the frame forward or backward. So the speed of the sphere will increase. Let's look at the different kinds of objects types in the simulation. As we've already seen, active object is an object that is active in the simulation, or reacts to the forces in it. We've talked about what a static object is, and it's an object that can hit other objects in the simulation, but isn't affected by the other forces. If I choose static object, the sphere doesn't move at all. An animated static object is a static object that can be moved by hand. But since it's a static object, it doesn't move because of gravity. Therefore, the object moves as we animated it, but it always remains in that position without ever falling. Deforming static object, on the other hand, means that the shape of this object is calculated in each frame. This can be helpful if the shape of the object changes over time. 
But we don't need it in this case, because the sphere stays the same. Last what we have already seen, the deforming active object, which is what we're interested in. So we have learned how to create simulations, by adding keyframes as well. So now we know how to move things around in an animation. Either by giving the object an initial speed, or by using keyframes to move the object by hand. But there is another very interesting way, which is to add the speed as an attribute to the single point that represents the object. This may seem a little confusing at first. Actually, it is very useful for making interesting animations. We have already seen that by creating a packed object, we turn it into a single point. We can see this through the info panel. This sphere consists of a single point. We can say the same for these boxes. We also saw how each point can have its own attributes. We did this by making changes to the P scale or normal attribute. We can add the velocity attribute in the same way. So, I can add the attribute to the point that represents the sphere. And we can use this velocity to determine the initial velocity of the sphere. We have already seen that the attribute create node is useful to add an attribute. So I'm going to put this node after the pack node. Then I write the as the name, which is the name of the native velocity attribute in Houdini. This attribute must be added to points, so I choose point as the class, which is also the default choice. Then open the geometry spreadsheet, so we can see the attributes. I want to split this panel in half, and choose geometry spreadsheet as the view on the right side. We can see, in the points panel, that a new attribute has been added. But the velocity is a vector, so we have to set the type to vector. By doing this, we get the three components along the x, y, and z axes. As usual, we can give this a starting value, for example along the x axis. But nothing happens when I start the animation. I have to tell Houdini to use this velocity to figure out how fast the object is moving. So, let's go to the dope network and choose this option in the packed object. This tells Houdini to use the velocity attribute to calculate how the object is moving. The sphere now moves along the x-axis, because we gave it a speed along that axis. Why can this method be useful? We had already seen how to add an initial velocity. The answer is that we can make a random distribution of speeds by assigning the velocity through an attribute just like we did with the p-scale and the normal attribute. For instance, I want to make an animation in which these pins explode in all directions. For now, I turn off this node by clicking on this symbol called Bypass. Now I want to do the same thing, but instead of giving the sphere a random speed, I want to give all of these pins a random velocity in every direction. So let's put an attribute randomized node after the copy to points node. Every time we add this node, the attribute that is created by default is CD. This is why these boxes all have different colors. We need to make the velocity attribute though. So V is what I write. Let's also look at the attribute in the geometry spreadsheet. Chose inside sphere as the distribution, so that we have a distribution in all directions. We can also increase the scale, so as to give a higher speed. Now we have to go into the dope network, and turn on the inherit velocity setting for the boxes. If we start the simulation, we can see that the pins move, as each one has a different speed. 
we can make the effect even bigger by making the scale bigger. For example, I take it to 20. The effect we get is almost that of an explosion. And the reason is that each of these points, representing the individual box, moves in a different direction because it has a different velocity attribute. Okay, so you can use this method to make explosion-looking animations like these.